this video series, let's take a look at the most hated stocks of 2023. These are stocks that are down double digits and some of them are selling at their all-time lows. Are they going to die or could they rebound to new highs and thrive? Let's find out in this video. So while the S&P 500 is up 15% this year, and stocks that I love this year, like Nvidia is up like 220%, Meta love this year up 130%, there are many stocks that are hated this year that have fallen out of favor. So for example, you have got Nike, which is about, well, down about 16% year to date. You have got Estee Lauder, down 39% year to date, all time lows. You have got the House of Mouse, Disney. Now, although Disney is flat for the year, it went all the way up and back all the way down. But for the last 12 months, Disney is down 26% at near all time lows. And then you've got C Limited or C that dropped into the C, uh, which is down about 30% year to date. You've got other hated stocks like Zoom, once a darling in the stock market, but uh, it's flat year to date, but for the last 12 months is down 19% and you have got finally PayPal. Well, actually there are a lot more, but just to rattle off a few, you've got PayPal, which is down 16% uh, year to date and down 33% for the last 12 months. So every time you see a stock that's near the all time lows or down double digits to some people, they may think, this is a great opportunity because the stock looks relatively very, very cheap. And yes, sometimes you can make a lot of money by buying stocks that look really very, very cheap. Like a great example is Meta. Meta was a stock that was hated last year, totally unloved. In fact, Meta was the most hated stock of 2022. If you recall, it went down over 70% last year, close to 80% in fact. It turned out to be a great opportunity since the lows, Meta has rebounded over 130%. And so for those of you who added onto Meta or bought Meta near the lows, you would have made a lot of money. So yes, you can make a lot of money buying stocks that have dropped significantly at near the all-time lows. But at the same time, you can also lose a lot of money if you buy these stocks that never rebound, that go down and never come back up. So the million dollar question, people always ask me is, so which are the ones that I can buy because they're gonna rebound back to new highs? And which are the ones I should avoid because they're gonna go down and never come back up? So it all depends on analyzing the underlying business. If the reasons the price went down are temporary reasons, they are cyclical reasons that will be resolved eventually and the business economic mode remains intact, its secular growth runway remains intact, that is a great opportunity. It will rebound back to new highs. But if the reason the stock price is dropping is because of a fundamental change in the economics of the business, like the business has lost its sustainable competitive advantage, it's lost its economic mode, and its ability to grow its revenue and profits are permanently impacted, like what happened to Nokia in the past when it got uh, disrupted by... The, the iPhone and the Blackberry and you know what happened to blockbuster videos that got disrupted by Netflix, then these are the situations that you don't want to touch these stocks because uh, they are permanent problems and they can drop and never come back. They can even go bust. So in this video, I'll show you how I analyze these fallen angels. Now again, every stock is different. With this first part of the video series, I'm going to start by looking at Nike. So if you think that this series is useful, do let me know in the comment section below and do vote what are the next stocks you would like me to look at, whether it's Estee Lauder or PayPal or Zoom or whichever that are hated currently. So let's begin with Nike. So as mentioned, Nike is down 16% for the year when the S&P 500 is up 15%. So what the heck is wrong with Nike? So again, is it a short-term problem they are facing or is it a permanent damage to this company and they have got no more future? First, we all know Nike. So Nike is the largest sports apparel and sports footwear retailer in the world. They have got the largest market share in sports footwear, uh, athletic footwear. Their market share is something like about 38% worldwide and their closest competitor is 
Adidas with a market share of about 24%. So their next closest competitor is almost half of their sales revenue. So they've got this huge leadership position in the market. And their third closest competitor would be Puma with an 8% market share. Now, of course, Nike does have indirect competitors as well, like they've got Lululemon, but it's an indirect competitor because that's more into yoga and more into apparel. And Nike, the majority of their revenue is not actually in sports apparel, it's actually in sports footwear. Apparel makes up a small percentage of the entire revenue base, right? So first, let's understand uh, why did Nike's share price drop significantly recently? So there are a few reasons. Some reasons are company specific because of the company's results, but a lot of it is not the company. It's some macro concerns about inflation, consumer spending, and what's happening to the overall retail market. So the first reason why Nike drop has nothing to do with Nike. It's got to do with two related companies, which are Foot Locker and Dick's Sporting Goods. So Foot Locker, as you guys know, they are a sports and footwear apparel retailer. And recently they announced very bad uh, results, their earnings was below expectations and they cited concerns that um, spending was slowing down for these athletic retail products. So they also cut their dividends, so their share price collapsed yesterday. And so when Foot Locker went down, people were then concerned that if they went down, then maybe Nike could also go down because they are related. Because Foot Locker sells Nike, they sell Puma, they sell Adidas, they sell all kinds of all the different brands, right? So in a way, Nike share price went down in sympathy because of its relationship with Foot Locker and not because anything actually happened to Nike, yeah? The other thing that happened a few days ago was Dick's Sporting Goods, which is another um, sports retailer. I don't know why anyone would call their son Dick. I mean, you must hate your son for calling him Dick. And why would you call your company Dick, right? But anyway, it's now a Dick. So uh, Dick's Sporting Goods also... Uh, announced results below expectations and the share price collapsed. So Dick went down, Foot Locker went down, so Nike went down in sympathy. So that's the first reason. The second reason why Nike went down was because of bad economic data from China. Now, does China make up a big part of Nike's business? Well, uh, it's not that big actually, but it is significant. So if you take a look over here, you can see that uh, for Nike's revenue, 38% comes from the US, 26% comes from Europe, Middle East and Africa, and 14% of Nike's business comes from China. Now, although China only contributes 15% of Nike's business, but China is Nike's fastest growing market. So in fact, uh, Nike's China business grew 25%, the highest growth in quarter four of last year. So because recent data from China showed higher unemployment and GDP was you know, below expectations, so people freaked out, oh my God, that could affect Nike's China business and that's why Nike dropped as well. So again, it's not really a, a company-specific reason, but there are more macro concerns about a slowdown in consumer spending in the US as well as China's slowdown in, in economic growth. So are there any actual... Uh, Nike company specific reasons for the stock going down. Well, there is a bit, but I wouldn't say that it is that concerning. So first, let's take a look at the fundamentals of Nike. Now, when I buy a stock, I always look at it as a business. And I only want to buy high quality businesses that have got a track record of consistently growing revenue, profits and free cash flow. And it's got to have a sustainable mode that protects it from competition. Now, as long as the company continues to have this mode, it continues to be a long-term growth um, cash machine, then any short-term problems is fine. I see any weakness as a chance to add more shares. But like I said, if I find that the long-term business model is impacted or it's losing its competitive advantage or there are some permanent issues, that's when I would stay away. So let's take a look at Nike's situation. So if we take a look at Nike, uh, you can see, first of all, its revenue has been growing consistently over the last 10, 15 years. You can see how consistent their revenue is, right? And their net income 
the one in green, you can also see that it has been also fairly consistent, right? Of course, there are some dips along the way, but it goes up again, dips, it goes up again. So it is overall on an uptrend. By the way, I'm, I'm using the website from Guru Focus in case you're wondering. So revenue has been growing consistently. Profit has also been on an uptrend. And if you take a look at their, most importantly, their free cash flow. Free cash flow has also been uh, increasing, has been increasing as you can see. Again, it's not a straight line. There are dips along the way, but overall it's on an uptrend. Now, if we take a look at their most recent year, let's see how they've done. Now, in terms of revenue, sales growth, year on year, they are up 16%, which is fantastic. For a company that size to grow 16%, top line is, is really, really great, right? So what's the problem? The problem is that their net income, the bottom line did not grow in the last 12 months. The bottom line, the one in green, their net income, dropped about 28% year on year. So why did revenue grow but profit dropped? Again, is it a temporary reason or is it a permanent reason? Let's find out in a short while. But let's take a look at free cash flow, which is even more important, right? Free cash flow in the last 12 months went up. So that's great. So revenue went up, free cash flow went up. The only thing that went down is their net profit. So when revenue goes up but net profit goes down, there are only two reasons. The first reason is because their costs have gone up, their expenses have gone up. Or number two, they have been cutting their price. This leads to lower profit margins. So indeed, their profit margins have contracted in the last year. Now, if a company's profit margins continue to contract, that's a bad sign, I'm out of that. But if their profit margins contract temporarily, for some good reason and they will expand later on, that's fine. So let's find out uh, why. Why did their profit margins uh, contract in the last one year? So after doing some digging, what I found is that the main reason for their margin contraction was because of COVID-related supply chain problems. So let me explain. Now remember that Nike doesn't make their own shoes. They only design the shoes. 100% of the shoe manufacturing is outsourced all around the world, especially to China, okay? Now, during COVID, many of the Chinese factories and in Vietnam and in India, they, they were all shut down. So people were ordering Nike shoes, but they couldn't get any stock because the factories were shut down. So there was not enough inventory at the time. And then what happened was that when the, uh, when the, the COVID was lifted and the factory started to run again, then all the orders came in. But by the time all the orders came in, the demand had dropped. So Nike was left with excess inventory, too many shoes that they ordered, all right? So that was the issue. So what Nike had to do in the last two, year, two years was to clear the excess inventory. To clear the excess inventory, they, they did two things. The first thing was they had to do markdowns. In other words, they had to uh, give big discounts to clear their inventory. Now, you guys know that I don't like companies that have to give discounts because a company that has to discount their goods, it shows that they don't have strong pricing power. And that's one reason why I'm concerned about Tesla because Tesla keeps on discounting to maintain market share, which is a red flag. So in the case of Nike, I'm not too concerned because for Nike's issue, the reason they are discounting is to clear the excess inventory in the short term. But once they clear the inventory, they can then begin to raise their prices again. And Nike had never a problem with pricing power. Most people are willing to pay more for a Nike shoe because of the brand equity. So that's the first reason. When a company uh, cuts price, that reduces their profit margins. The second reason uh, the second thing was, in order to clear the merchandise, Nike had to spend a lot more on advertising and promotions to clear the merchandise. So that increased their cost, okay? And because of high inflation in the last two years, their administrative and general expenses also went up. So this was a double whammy. They cut their uh, sales price to clear inventory and their advertising went up, their cost went up, and that led to profit margin contraction and that's why their net profit dropped 28%, even though their revenue went up, okay? So the good news is that 
Is it temporary? I believe so. Because once they clear their inventory, uh, then they can begin to cut down their ad advertising promotional expenses. They can raise prices again and they can then go back to high, their high margins. All right. So in fact, if you take a look at their recent report back in June, you can see that um, at the end of quarter two, uh, Nike's inventory levels were up 43%. So that was really bad. But at the end of quarter three, they were only up 16%. And by quarter four, it was essentially flat. So you can see that their inventory has been very nicely coming down and now it's flat year on year. All right. So as I explained uh, earlier on, with inventory approaching normalized levels, the company should be able to cut back on their uh, expenses and expand its margins again. So once that happens, Nike should be able to reaccelerate their net income growth. And that's when the share price will rebound significantly. But usually the price will rebound way before that happens because the market tends to price in uh, the future, right? So you can see that Nike is actually a very profitable company. If you take a look at the uh, ratios, it's pretty uh, impressive. Their return on equity is 33%. So rule of thumb is that any company with an ROE above 12% is a good business. Above 15% is an excellent business. And their ROE is a freaking 33%. It's really, really great, right? Their return on invested capital ROIC is also 22%. So anytime you see ROE and ROIC way above 15%, this is what we call a compounder, a company that can compound their equity and their capital at huge returns. And Nike is also a very conservative company in terms of their debt. You can see the debt to EBITDA ratio is 1.79, which means theoretically they can pay off all their debt for just 1.79 years of earnings. So rule of thumb is that debt to EBITDA ratio, we want it to be ideally below three. Anything above three would be a bit risky, right? And not only that, their debt to equity ratio is below one, where most companies' debt to equity ratio is actually above one. And of course, of course, the lower the better, yeah? Now, the next question would be, okay, so this business looks like it's very profitable, short-term drops in net profit look temporary, they should be able to rebound. But the question is, is the share price cheap right now? What's the intrinsic value? That's the most important thing. So again, using my intrinsic value calculator, I've put in the latest operating cash flow for Nike at 5.8 billion. It's got 8.9 billion in debt, but 10.6 billion in cash. They've got more cash than debt. So it's a very conservative company, all right? Uh, it's growth rate moving forward. If you take a look at uh, over here, you can see the next five years is projected to grow at uh, 15%. And even on Capital IQ, you can see it's projected mean growth at 15%. So I'm using a 15% uh, kind of like growth, right, for the first five years. And if it continues that growth, and tapers down to 4%, 1.5 billion shares outstanding. I'm using a discount rate of 6.2%. Now, uh, again, bear in mind, everyone uses a different discount rate. Warren Buffett uses the 10-year treasury yield as his discount rate. Some people use the weighted average cost of capital. I like to use the cost of equity. So we all have different ways of discounting future cash flow. So based on my approach, my intrinsic value is $136. Now, what's interesting is I took a look at uh, Morningstar, which is another research website, and, and you can see that Morningstar, their intrinsic value is about 136, which is exactly the same as mine, which is pretty rare because most of the time, my intrinsic value tends to be more conservative. It tends to be lower than the Morningstar valuation, but in this case, it's exactly the same as the Morningstar valuation. Now, this is based on a 15% growth. If I want to be more conservative now and say, okay, that's my base case scenario, but if I want to have a conservative scenario, let's assume that their growth from 15% falls to 10.5% in the following five years. Uh, that's about 20% drop in their growth rate. That gives me an intrinsic value of 118. Okay. So when I calculate intrinsic value, I always want to have a range. 
where it's like a conservative to a base case. So in this case, my range for Nike valuation is 118 to 136, okay? And the current share price is $98, which means that I've got a margin of safety. If I buy it right now, I'm buying it at between a 16% to a 27% uh, discount, which is a pretty good deal. Now, if you want to learn how to do your own stock research, do enroll in the Value Momentum Investing course, which I teach you how to analyze stocks. Or if you're just very lazy, you can join the UIP Ultimate Investors Playbook, where I do all this stock research for you every month. And uh, you get latest updates on my buys, my sales, and my portfolio allocation. Finally, let's take a look at the chart of Nike. So you can see that, again, if you look at the long-term chart, Nike is on a very nice long-term uptrend. And it's always the case with high quality companies. And you can see that historically, this 50 moving average acted as a very strong support during big market drops, okay? So you can see that uh, over here, it hit the 50 moving average in blue, and now it's broken below that 50 moving average. So that 50 moving average uh, is where I have drawn a level of support because you can see historically it's been supported by that level okay now you can also see what happened during last year's bear market the price actually hit the 100 moving average which is this orange line so that is also now a significant level of support and that's how i've identified about 119 and 91 as two strong levels of support on the long-term charts. If you then zoom down to the weekly charts, uh, you can see another level of support over here that was recently broken, okay, because of Dick and Foot Locker. So the question is, would it then go down to retest the third support level or could it rebound back from here? Again, this is something that we can't predict for certain. So my strategy is to do this now if i zoom into the daily candles you can see um, on the daily time frame so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wait to see if it is able to go down to this third level of support at about 91 dollars right so if it gets down there i'll start to add more to my position i already have a small position in nike which i bought quite some time ago my average price is about 104 so i am slightly below water right so it gets up to 91 i'll happily add more at 91 but it may not go down to 91, you, you can't predict, right? So if, if, if it doesn't continue dropping, right? If it suddenly reverses back up towards the second level of support, and, I, and I'm pretty convinced that it has really reversed, I will then add uh, here, right? Rather than wait over there. So I'm always watching the price action to see, okay, where do I wanna add to bring down my average cost of this business? So that's essentially how I analyze my investments, whether to add more shares or to exit a position. So if you find this most hated stocks series useful, let me know in the comment section and do let me know which other stock you like me to analyze. Is it Disney or Estee Lauder or Zoom or C or PayPal? You know, do let me know and I'll do a couple more if there's enough interest. Thank you for watching and may the markets be with you. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Kuhl and may the markets be with you.